remember the day Irene came, or the forecast, and we were actually fairly blasé about it. Uh, the house we lived in was pretty old. It had survived the 1927 flood, which we looked at as the benchmark. Things happened so quickly when it hit that, you know, for a 15 minute period, one tree after another went down. Mm -hmm. Then their deck was listing. And throughout this whole period, all you could hear, it sounded like thunder because the water was moving so fast, it was carrying boulders. And they were just grinding against each other with this noise like thunder throughout mm -hmm. the whole day. You could smell the dirt. It was like there was an excavation shovel mm. pulling the dirt out of the hill that our house had been on. Mm. So it just smelled like spring and mm. when, there, when it's raining and the dirt is exposed. It just smelled, you could smell soil everywhere. And then, you know, shortly after that, the, fell over and the house fell over yeah you know I basically thought I was that was it I really didn't think I was gonna survive because the water was coming up but I was you know once I just accepted that it, I got very calm and mm. it was like my subconscious just clicked in and, you know, it's like another voice in your head telling you what to do. It was, it was a completely, everything, everything was different. All your reference points are gone. But something like that happens. It's just so disruptive to you know just your 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 day to day routine is built on assumptions. You know you you have a house to live in. It's going to be there. You know, the floors don't turn into walls. You know, you know water doesn't do that. This flood, which was caused by worse than the 1927 flood. That was, that was a, a major disaster. That turned, that destroyed Vermont's industrial base. But, you know, this is, this is on a bigger scale. I mean, you can just see in the weather, uh, farm state, we depend on, you know, if there's some farmers depend on the weather, depend on having, you know, the right amount of sun and rain to, to grow what they need to put in the market to, to take care of their livestock. And what is happening is that it's taking the predictability that people need to plan. You know, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's climate change, it's too many pesticides. There's a lot of things that you know, human beings are, are doing to their environment that need to be stopped. We have to start uh, working with nature instead of trying to dominate it. Our society is built around cheap fossil fuels, but they're not cheap. The, the, it's just that the people that, the corporations that sell them aren't paying the full cost. Those costs aren't included with the cost of a gallon of gasoline or the cost of a gallon of heating fuel. If those costs were fairly included, the cost of having to clean up costs of oil train spills, all those costs were included, oil would be the most expensive fuel. One of the features I like about putting a price on carbon is that the tax money that's put on it will be used to facilitate the transition to a clean energy economy. Vermont's always been people that don't just talk, but they walk their talk. Mm -hmm. When Irene came, everybody was looking, was their first response is, how can we help? I've 
became involved is because it's, I feel it's our duty to, you know, to, to give the world to our children in better shape, not worse. I feel uh, responsible that my daughters have a world that's, that's better than this.